American Independence and the Articles of Confederation British taxation of American colonies was the key event that sparked the Founding Fathers to declare independence. Patrick Henry's famous oratory in 1775 via the Virginia Convention is where he flirted with treason when he hinted that the king risked suffering the same fate as Julius Caesar if he maintained his oppressive policies. Gentlemen may cry, peace, peace, but there is no peace. The war is actually begun. The next gale that sweeps from the north will bring to our ears the clash of resounding arms. Our brethren are already in the field. Why stand we here idle? Is life so dear or peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? Forbid it, almighty God. I know not what course others may take, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death. The American Revolution was spurred on with the commentary such as that. In the view of American colonists, British rule was viewed as oppressive and restricted basic God-given freedoms. Soon many passionate and dedicated patriots such as Thomas Paine, Samuel Adams, Thomas Jefferson, and John Adams voiced their opinions and support for the revolution. The Declaration of Independence in 1776, the American Revolution, and the creation of the Articles of Confederation all represent an attempt to become a sovereign nation. As the tensions between the American colonists and Britain intensified, the Second Continental Congress convened on July the 4th, 1776. The delegates approved the Declaration of Independence, the events that marked the birth of the United States. John Locke's social contract theory was the inspiration Thomas Jefferson needed to draft a list of grievances against King George. His words clearly shaped the philosophical basis of the new government. To secure these rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. The argument from Jefferson, and written within the Declaration of Independence, asserts that the British government had abused these rights and that the colonists had the right to, quote, alter or abolish it and to institute a new government. Revolution and the Articles of Confederation The Articles of Confederation was a compact amongst the 13 original states written in 1776, but not fully ratified until 1781. Generally, it was known as a League of Friendship among the states as it reflected the Founders' aversion to centralized government or power. This was all created by the colonists to give the impression of unity and a government during wartime. This new form of a government gave the majority of powers to the states, and the central government only consisted of a loose confederation of legislators from each colony. Most of all, the colonists wanted to ensure personal liberty at the state level, but the central government's lack of power proved to be disastrous. Among many things the central government could not do included regulation of trade across borders, no central currency, no tax, or maintaining a foreign policy. No chief executive could make real decisions, and there was no national court to settle disputes. More importantly, the newly formed confederation could not pay debts nor conduct war. It was Shays' rebellion that showed the weaknesses of the Articles of Confederation. When the government could not put down the rebellion, the first stirrings of federalism began to gather strength. By 1786, the new country was in serious economic straits, and states were quarreling over boundary lines and tariffs. An economic depression left not only the states in trouble, but also many ordinary citizens, such as farmers and merchants, were deep in debt as well. Shays' Rebellion, a revolt by angry farmers in Massachusetts, symbolized the chaos in the country. Even though the Massachusetts militia finally put the rebellion down, it pointed out the inability of the central government to maintain law and order. 
In reaction, Alexander Hamilton of New York initiated the organization of a meeting in Philadelphia in 1787. This convention would eventually throw out the Articles of Confederation and draft the Constitution. So, the freedom that the American Revolution sought to preserve proved to create a government under the Articles of Confederation that could not keep law and order. But the failure of the initial experiment helped the founders to find a more perfect balance between liberty and order in the Constitution they produced in 1787.